Yeah, so you can. Hello and a very good evening to you all. Myself, Solu Gautam, and today on behalf of my team, I'll be hosting this session. And I extend a very warm welcome to each one of you who have been connected with us to our ITOX program. Well, I would like to thank you all for taking the time out from your heavy schedule and marking our program with your glorious presence. Thank you for joining with us this evening. And also don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for being updated to our programs even in the upcoming days. For now, I would like to inaugurate this session and also I would like to let you all know that we will be having our discussion session at the end of today's presentation. So if you get any queries in between, just drop them on our comment section. We will get back to you later on. Today with us as a speaking delegate, we have Mr. Pratyus Kal, who is a senior consultant optometrist at Carl Jais India. And today he will shed a light on topic, customized silicon hydrogel contact lens so is case series. Welcome, Mr. Pratyus, for today's session, and thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much, Solu. So now it's over to you. Please proceed. Okay, thank you so much again for the for your team, Meroi team, Kapil and yourself. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone are doing fine in this pandemic, uh, which has affected the entire world. So today we'll just discuss about Customize uh, silicon hydrogen contact lenses. That is one of the, you know, uh, difference case that I got when I was there in uh, Mumbai. So it had a few, a few uh, very much different pattern than what we usually get in our patients. So that was my idea to, you know, uh, do a case study on that patient because it was really a very unique and new findings that we got in this case. So I'll start with the Jack case. Uh, this case was a very young patient at the age of 21, a female. Uh, she wanted, sorry, so he, so she wanted to get rid of her glasses. She had a very high hypermetropia of plus 11 diopter with plus one cylindrical in the, both the eyes. And with the glasses, she has six, nine vision, or you can say 20 by 40 vision in both eyes. And she was using, uh, uh, you know, history of using contact lenses, but she wasn't very much comfortable with contact lenses because uh, some of, I don't know who gave her, she went to an optical shop and she showed her power. Probably they gave her some, you know, ready-made soft contact lenses where the base corp and uh, the di uh, diameter will not altered according to her, but uh, she found it very difficult using those soft contact lenses. And some of the practitioners also prescribed her RGP, but <clears throat> she was very much intolerant with the RGP. As we all know, RGP, it takes few days to you know incorporate the irritation of the RGP when you wear it for the first time. But she did wear it for like 15, 20 days, but still she wasn't very much comfortable and the irritation wouldn't go away at all. So she has not used any kind of lenses. She was using the very thick glasses. Yeah, as you can see, the hypermetropia is a very high. So she didn't have any family history of, uh, you know, high power, uh, either is myopic or any other defective error. And at the same time, she didn't have any history of uh, keratoconus or something like that. So it was a very much a clean patient with no any family history, with no any you know sibling history or anything, and she was the only you know person in her family who, uh, who was using a very thick lenses. Her birth history was also fine. She was not like premature or you know anything else. Uh, her birth weight and everything was absolutely normal as described by her mother, which. Uh, she was there with her when she came to me. Then 
then we advised her okay if you want some kind of contact lenses first let us see what exactly you know findings we may find in the topography uh, in your axial length in your pachymetry the uh, as you can see there the tessido dix based corneal topography which was from the alcon company it it did reveal a very much steep corneal surface so the area appeared very suspicious for me as well as for an ophthalmologist who was there with us we constantly discussed her case for a, like another hour or so we we took a very long time to decide either we should give this patient a contact lens or you know uh, icl uh, implantable contact lenses or rgps in that case and uh, we also suspected that patient because she has very much steep cornea the average you can see 49.6 diopter in the right eye and in left eye it was 49.3 obviously the topography would state that patient as an has an abnormal cornea curvature but what surprised us was even she had a such a steep cornea look at her pachymetry her pachymetry is like 526 micron and 528 micron so which was a very normal corneal pachymetry in a very steep cornea usually what happens in case of you know when there is a you suspect a keratoconus patient there are six parameters where you suspect a patient having a, a keratoconus one of them is a steep cornea where that patient has a steep cornea yes right but keratometry was way beyond 500 micron so that did surprise us again we went to check her axial length her axial length is 17.16 mm which is very short eyeball as you all know 24 mm is the normal uh, axial length for any human being so she had a 17.16 mm in the right and 17.12 mm in the left eye so which explained to us that she had an axial hypermetropia because of the Uh, axial length she had so much high hypermetropy another surprising thing that came on uh, our our findings was her anterior chamber depth you see in case of hypermetropia the ac is anterior chamber is always a shallow it's not even normal maybe around 2 mm uh, anterior chamber or less than 2 mm in case she has a very very in this case she has a very high hypermetropia we expected her anterior chamber to be very shallow but contradicting our you know knowledge and whatever we have read her anterior chamber depth was 3.53 in right and 3.54 mm in the left eye we were so surprised to see such a deep anterior chamber in such a high uh, hypermetropia case so i have a, the exact picture of her topo topographic evaluation as you can see the topography evaluation the the pattern the pattern of the curvature is also very much straight uh, which we define that she doesn't have any keratoconic changes almost matching with our you know the refraction just 5 to 6 degrees from our refraction so that means we are we we are seeing a very high hypermetropia but at the same time we are seeing a uh, very steep cornea because in hypermetropia the corneas are usually flat if you if you go to the textbook in myopia the cornea becomes more steeper uh, but in hypermetropia the cornea are more flatter but in her case the cornea was steeper but she had a very high hypermetropia so we were very much confused me and the, the you know the treating ophthalmologist we both had a, as i said earlier we had a very long discussion what to do with a, with that case and obviously the first option that came to us was rgp but since the patient said a direct no to the rgp lenses because of tolerant issue she tried it for like 15 20 days she was not even interested to do a trial for rgp lenses <clears throat> so normal then comes the normal hcl i mean soft contact lenses because her you know base curve is so high or you can say so curved that the normal uh, soft contact lenses they usually have 8.4 or 8.6 
base curve. So, which is not even suitable. And we did a trial with the soft contact lenses, but whenever she blinked, the contact lenses folded inside the eye. So that was our like, no, we can't give it to her. So there we came. Um, there is one company that recently has come to us, and they said that they are, you know, trying. Uh, they have started making silicon hydrogel, which is a silicon hydrogel contact lenses customize customize means again that means any reading that we give it to them you know they will make it for us according to the base curve diameter power whatever we suggest they will make it the same to us so we gave them the power of 13.5 in both the eyes since we used four is to one uh, method and the other uh, the contact lens formula for the contact lens uh since uh, it will increase when you use contact lenses in case of hypermetropia and it will decrease if it's myopia so it increased from 11 to it increased 13.5 and base curve according to the topography we gave her the base curve of 7.7 .7 and diameter according to the measurement of her cornea the 1 mm extra uh, sorry 2 mm extra we gave it 14 mm so her cornea was also uh, it will not called that is a microcornea, but that wasn't microcornea because it wasn't less than 10 mm. It was like 11.5 uh, mm, if I remember. So we gave her a diameter of 14 uh, mm. The customized silicon hydrogel lens, even it was our first time we, are, we tried it for the first time, and that patient was among the firstest patient of that company where they have made so high power. As a customized silicon hydrogen lens. So contact lens. Then after when the result came, when the lens was delivered to us, we called the patient. Uh, then we did, you know, we put it the patient. And the moment we put that in the patient's eye, both the eyes, she was one of the happiest person I have ever seen as a patient. Because all of you know, you know, you wearing a plus eleven diopter glasses. For any girl or in that matter, for any young person, either a boy or a girl, it's it's not that easy because of its cosmetic look, because of its uh, heaviness of the lenses or heaviness of the spectacle, because, you know, in the college, in your home, your friends, all of them, they keep on saying you, teasing you something and all. She was one of the happiest person, happiest patient I ever had. And the moment she wore the contact lenses, she started blinking and she was so happy that even I was very much satisfied. Both the doctor was also so happy that we did a very good, we gave a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, prescription for the patient. And the, and the the very best thing was the lens was very good centered. It has a very good coverage. It has a very good, good moment. When she blinked, it has a very good moment. Uh, again, the vision wasn't compromised because from the both the eyes, you can see 6 by 9 or you can see 20 by 40. Uh, the only thing was because as you know, in soft contact lenses, when it's a high power, th there is a little bit uh, um, compromise in vision. So when we had a unicular vision, her vision was 6 to part uh, in both the eyes. It was 6 to part. But when binocularly her vision was six by nine so she she did not had any complaint regarding vision after that wearing contact lenses she was happy and the another thing that we found out that we have read in our theories that ac depth decreases in hypermetropia for this patient it was something another the AC depth was deep, I will say. It's not even normal. It's a deeper AC depth. Cornea is so steep because we all know when the cornea is more than 46 diopter, 47 diopter, we suspect that patient as a keratoconus patient normally whenever we do a topography. But even being a 49 diopter uh, of, you know, average K, that patient didn't had any keratoconic changes. Keratoconic changes will include pachymetry, which was again more than 500, so ruling out any kind of keratoconic changes. Another thing, there was no any signs 
of keratoconus, no flacid sling, no oil droplet sign, no nothing because cornea was obviously cornea was normal thickness, so you will not see all those signs. There is no oblique astigmatism, there is no irregular astigmatism. Uh, there is a regular astigmatism in one in uh, 180 degree in our spectacles as we saw. So everything was so surprising for us that a young patient, you know, at the age of 21, she really make us think are the kind of diagnosing we would make if, you know, it, we didn't had uh, all these theories around. So it was a very unique case, as I'll say, I'll go back to this one and I'd like to show you the, you know, the, if I can, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little blur. So even the keratoconia, even the, you know, the uh, curvature of the cornea, it almost is, uh, you know, 48 and 50. So it's not much of a difference. It's not very high difference between the vertical meridian and horizontal meridian. They are almost same, not much. And we all know that uh, uh, even in the left eye, it's, 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 it's the same thing. You see, the, though it's a little bit blur, but uh, it's 48 and around 48.5 and 50 around here also at the, in, in this 3mm zone. So mostly the, the main important thing is the 3mm zone. So 3mm zone, they see doesn't have much of a difference. And you can see the kind of astigmatism is almost around 80, 85, 86 degrees here. And it's around 175 degrees over here. So, so much surprising for us. It was uh, a, a complete uh, new findings and we both uh, the ophthalmologist and myself were both more, um, very much happy actually to say to find you know these cases. The another thing I like to mention is the company which uh, gave us the uh, contact lenses. It's I think they are one of kind of in India customized uh, silicon hydrogen lenses. Uh, why silicon hydrogen lenses? Why not hydro hydrogen lenses? Many would question. That's because we all know <coughs> the oxygen permeability and the oxygen transmissibility in uh, uh, silicon hydrogel are much, much higher compared to the hydrogen lens since it was a very high power. So we could not, we did not want it to take uh, any kind of risks with the cornea because if you give it to the hydrogel in such a high power, obviously, after uh, you know a few months time she will start having another problems uh, of cornea hypoxia or maybe uh, there will be a new vascularization around the limbus so we didn't want wanted to have uh, any other complication so we tried for the silicon hydrogen lens so that you know her cornea uh, will receive the oxygen in a proper basis and you know, when there is a high power lenses, that means the lenses are also thick. So if we have used hydrogen lenses, again, the oxygen would not have transmitted as uh, easily as it does in silicon hydrogen. Yes, there are some, you know, uh, disadvantage of silicon hydrogen, like the deposits, it gets deposit attracted very fast. And maybe the, uh, 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 other than that, uh, it, it you cannot use it for a longer period of time. I mean, the uh, the silicon hydrogel lens, you have to change it after six, seven months, whatever kind of silicon hydrogel you use it. So uh, in hydrogel lenses, you can you wear up to one year without any problem, but I know that, but you know, since she has a high power, we wanted her cornea to be healthy. And another thing, the lens thickness, is the matter the lens thickness in this was very uh, not very high but it's a higher thickness of the contact lenses so we wanted her cornea to be extremely safe in a longer period of time not a short uh, in a shorter period of time which is for a longer period of time then again she visited us after uh, six months mm, the patient uh, visited us after uh, six months so after six months when she came she said i don't want anything else i want the same lenses I am feeling very much happy. We did her uh, optical examination, the cornea and everything. And she was uh, again, very much happy. We ordered the same lenses. We did a topography 
and the almost the reading were same then we supplied her the same contact lenses so it was one of the kind uh, difference uh, one more thing so this uh, case study i have published the same case study i have published in a optum open access uh, journal uh, published by omnis international uh, it's from europe so if you want to get a detail on this kind of uh, this uh, case study you can always uh, you know go to the internet and you can search for this case this was published way back around 2 to 3 years back in uh, this uh, uh, steam journal i would say an open access journal <laughs> which was published in, uh, as you can see the date it was published on uh, november 3rd 2017 so it has been already published in the uh, international journal so so i would like to uh, i would like to take any questions or any you know confusion or anything if you have hmm. thank you mr papus for such a wonderful press presentation yes sir is there any question yeah let me check out the questions that our audience might have raised we don't have any questions as of now mm -hmm. if you are having any queries then you can come up with your questions on our chat box mr pratyush will be happy to clear all your queries yes where can i i see i mean those questions or something actually we have to go for youtube to see for the questions oh okay i am checking through youtube only so there is no any questions till now we will be waiting just for a few more minutes if anyone have any queries Uh, so Lizzie, can you please check the uh, question in chat? Yeah, yeah, I just got the question. Okay. We have a question. The question goes as: Can you tell me the brand name? Now. Sorry. Brand name of the contact lens. Oh, oh, right, right. <clears throat> so that ka contact lens was made by uh, contacare company uh, it was since it was a customized the name would be the company would be contact uh, contacare uh, it is based the company is based on uh, gujarat baroda they have their uh, contact lens plant there contact uh, contacare is also known as io care they make uh, iol as well as the soft contact lenses rgps uh, they may they are usually on the lenses both the iol and contact lenses so it's contacare c o n t a c a r e thank you for your answer we have another question by osmita madan thank you for your question mm -hmm. the question goes as as she was hyperopic why you insist her to try for rgp as rgp is for high astigmatism okay yeah actually no it's it's kind of a, you know i think a little confusion with the rgp lenses rgp lenses are not only for high astigmatism rgp is also for high powers so there is a little confusion on that that rgp should we should prescribe rgp only for the high astigmatism patient that is true it's not that it's not true but you can also you know use rgp as a solution for the high refractive error be it a myopia be it a hypermetropia you can always use rgp 
as a remedy for that in case patient want to go on that because rgp can give a very good remedy for that this patient if she would have agreed rgp would have been a complete uh, very nice thing for her i agree with you because she has a very steep cornea as you can see so rgp is always a solution in case of a high refractive error is not that it should only be used when there is a very high astigmatism yes it should be used on that thing but again i repeat it can be also used for high refractive errors any more questions okay i guess we have the problem with internet so i'm continuing the session okay uh, there is one question from vg so she is asking for so in the india is uh, the only custom uh, customized uh, customized silicon hydrogel lens is available Yes, in India it is available. Okay. I didn't get your question completely, Kapil. Can you just repeat it? Uh, sir, this is on the chat box. You can see also in the chat box. So, which one? Asking... The the uh, this is YouTube chat box or is it in? No, no, sorry, no. Zoom chat box. Okay. Zoom chat box. Okay. Again, yes, yes, yes. So in India is the only customized silicon hydrogen. So, and uh, care and regimen is same like university. Can yes, correct. Uh, uh, I think this is by VG, right? Uh, yes, VG, you are you are right. Mm. Uh, I think uh, I don't know about uh, any, uh, other countries either they have. Uh, customizable silicon hydrogel lens or not uh, but uh, this was one of the first kind of uh, thing in entire india though there are many companies who uh, uh, yeah in india it is one 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 of the kind yes in india it was one of the kind because uh, till then there was no any other company uh, who used to produce a customized silicon hydrogel lens uh in the current scenario or if you ask me presently because presently now there are a lot of contact lens company that has arrived in india uh so many i think few of them has started making silicon hydrogel lenses maybe two or three not more than that but there are plenty of company who make hydrogel lenses customized but only few of them barely i think um, uh um i forgot one of the name of the company it's a, it's a singapore based company who have a plant in delhi they have a plant there in delhi they have also started making silicon hydrogel lenses customized uh, uh i i i sorry i actually forgot the name uh, this pure con yeah it's it's just pure con yeah pure con i think they have started making silicon hydrogel lenses uh, how to order these lenses uh you can order these lenses like if you are a institutional base uh, company like if you are in a eye hospital working so maybe probably your eye hospital need to you know get registered with the company because if you haven't done any transaction before uh, they would not provide you uh, immediately Uh, yes but if you do it in cash they will provide you immediately in like cash on delivery kind of thing uh, if you are an optical shop again in a way optical shop you might have to register with them first to avail the credit period if you don't want to avail credit period do want to cash on delivery you can always uh, they have their own website you can go on their website uh, it's a uh, 
इनके कौन यू कैन गो ऑन द वेबसाइट इट्स देयर यू कैन कांटेक्ट टू देयर कस्टमर सेंटर एंड मे बी दे विल यू नो रीडायरेक्ट यू टू द देयर कांटेक्ट लेंस डिपार्टमेंट इफ पॉसिबल आई विल जस्ट शेयर इट विद यू आल्सो जस्ट कपल ऑफ मिनट्स because they have a uh, this customer service available yeah they have their phone number in their website uh, vijay if you want to order you can directly call them and ask them how how to order this lenses or not they are, their service is available in entire india uh, mostly in the major cities they deliver within 2 to 3 days time only in some places it might take Uh, a bit the longer period to deliver otherwise they usually deliver in 2 to 3 days you can go contactcare.com uh, yes it was indeed a very interesting case that is why you know i immediately you know took all the details of the patient all the pictures i could take uh, from the topography and all those things so we immediately thought this is one of a case that you will find ever maybe in around 10 years you will find this kind of case where everything goes against what you have you know studied what you have read that hypermetropia will be a shallow ac flatter cornea and everything is the pachymetry everything is just opposite you know it's a steeper cornea ac is deep but she has a very high hypermetropia and even the fundus is normal even in case you see vision she didn't develop mlipia that was another good thing because usually in hypermetropia high hypermetropia children tends to get amblyopic but here she started using the glasses at the age of i think 5 or 6 at the age of 5 or 6 she started using glasses so amblyopia was prevented uh, so everything she has a very good vision i'll say with plus 11 like 6 9 vision with plus 11 is boon for many people because otherwise we will have very less vision i have particularly seen such cases where a plus 5 hypermetropia has a vision of 624 because he didn't use glasses at the right time and he developed amblyopia so this was a very interesting case thank you so much pratik sir i guess we have answered almost all the questions till now uh one more i think he has added just i think he said uh, so which one so with the one trial lens you have fitted optimal yes that's because though it was not trial lenses you know it was a customized lenses we took her base curve uh, we took the um, diameter of her cornea the exact power according to the you know power conversion chart and everything so it was just ready to she had ready to use it so we even that was a kind of uh, you know trial and error method we just told her to use it for a week if she finds any difficulties she can come back but as you can see in that case she never had difficulty with that lenses because it was the exact lenses made for her i only so with one lenses exact lenses we gave her we didn't do any trial with any other lenses we just try to put on the soft contact lenses to see fitting but soft contact lenses as i said it curvature is uh, it base curve is 8.6 or 8.4 which will not suit her at all it didn't suit her at all we didn't do rgb trial so what we directly do we directly put the new lenses made according to her parameters and that's it she was happy are they providing trial lenses they used to provide trial lenses earlier but not with this customized silicon lenses they have other contact lenses also i mean the ready made contact lenses also they have other contact lenses also so they were providing trial of those contact lenses but since this is made to order lenses they usually don't provide trial for these types of lenses because they say if if there is any problem in this patient i mean if it is not suitable though you have given a correct pattern parameters if it is not suitable you can always send it back 
and they will again provide you another access. Okay, we have another question, and the question goes as: Does this contact lens work for astigmatic patient as well? Astigmatism as well. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, it depends how much amount of astigmatism it is there. If it comes under their parameters of astigmatism, maybe because you know, some company makes uh, up to minus two, some will make up to minus three. And there are some even the hydrogel lenses they can make whatever they want. So in hydrogel lenses there is no any limitation. But in this silicon hydrogel, it is uh, they they have some limitations. Uh, exactly, I think three diopter up to three diopter in these customized lenses they have. Uh, on these silicon hydrogel lenses, they have up to minus three or um, three diopter of cylinder. Okay, these are only the questions that have been raised by our audience so far. I guess we have answered all the questions till now. Considering the time limits, here I announce the closure of discussion session. I would again like to express my immense gratitude towards our presenter, Mr. Pratyus, and as well to all the attendees for their endurance. Also, I would like to thank all the direct and indirect helping hands for ITOX program. Before wrap up, I request our today's presenter, Mr. Pratyus Chakal, to share his few words to our program. Uh, uh, yes, thank you so much, uh, Solu, Kapil, and the entire team. You guys are doing a very great work. Because I think this is a session number, I think 73, like right? So like it's already been 73 and I just remember you started a few days back, a few months back now. So it's a great initiative. I will always be there to help you guys in case of anything you want. Kapil knows, be, Kapil knows better. So I'm always there to help on this case because I myself keep on, you know, uh, see chances where I can read or I can learn more more from the other person from the book or kind of website. So it's a, really a good opportunity for us as an optometrist for the newcomers who have just completed or those are in the final year students or even for other optometry students uh, and practitioners. It's a very, very good opportunity to learn and to upgrade yourself with lots of lots of knowledge now I think everybody realized that optometry is not confined inside a circle. There is a big amount of scope and there's a big amount of knowledge content in the field of optometry. So I re I'm really thankful to you guys doing a, such a great job. Thank you so much, sir. It's our pleasure to have you. Thank you, Sulu. Here with, I announce the closure of today's session. Hoping to see you all again tomorrow. Stay safe, stay connected. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone stay safe, please.